I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday I pose to you a reaction mechanism for you to solve and then we go over the answers. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and see if you can answer this mechanism. And make sure you stick around to the end because I have another mechanism for you to solve for next week's episode. In the introduction slide, I showed the deprotonation of an alpha carbon hydrogen. So the alpha carbon is the carbon that is directly adjacent to some carbonyl group. Importantly, due to the electron withdrawing nature of the carbonyl functional group, this acidifies the protons at that alpha carbon position, making it susceptible to deprotonation. In organic chemistry class, you probably learned about this in the context of forming enols and enolates. The same type of reaction and the same type of mechanism can be drawn for alpha carbons that are adjacent to sulfonyl groups, because these are also very electron withdrawing groups, which are going to acidi acidify the alpha carbon hydrogen. So therefore, the first step in this mechanism is actually the deprotonation of that alpha carbon hydrogen. And this is effectively going to generate a lone pair anion at this carbon position. Now that we've generated this intermediate, which has a lone pair of electrons, we can use those lone pair of electrons to attack the epoxide ring, which is going to open this epoxide ring and eventually give us our carbonyl group over here. So this is how the epoxide ring opens up which places this carbon to oxygen bond at this carbon position exclusively. Now importantly, this next intermediate, which I've gone ahead and drawn for you, remember we were forming this new carbon-carbon bond at this position, which is at exactly this position here. Remember that this other carbon-to-carbon -carbon bond is still present, which previously was where the epoxide was, but now we just have this carbonyl group, or what will eventually become a carbonyl group. Because the next step in this overall annulation reaction is actually going to be a cascade of electron movement. So first, the electrons on this oxygen are going to come down to fully form our carbonyl group, which means that this would make five bonds a carbon, so what has to happen is that these electrons in between this covalent bond actually have to shift to being located at this position, which is what gives us our pi bond and liberates this carbon-carbon bond from existing and opening the ring. And simultaneously, what will happen is that this sulfonyl, aerolated sulfonyl group will actually come off as a leaving group, which is why it's not present in our final product. In fact, this is the last step in our reaction mechanism. So in fact, this is only a two-step reaction mechanism. Even though the overall transformation looked relatively complicated, we first had deprotonation of an alpha carbon hydrogen, followed by nucleophilic attack to open the epoxide ring, and then finished off with a cascade of electron movement where we reform the carbonyl oxygen, opening the carbon-carbon bond and forming our new pi bond at this location and kicking off the leaving group. Interestingly, this reaction was discovered in 1970 76, and it's actually published in a paper, uh, Helvetica Chimica Acta, and again it was published in 1976, and the volume number is 59, and the page number is 2443, in case you wanted to go check out this initial publication describing this reaction mechanism. For next week's video, I'd love for you to solve this chemical transformation. Drop it as a comment down below so I can see how you did. And make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on the solution next Monday.